So first, I want to thank you for Kibom and other step or Kyopo. I mean, like a, you know. So, well, I mean, I came to Los Angeles to have a, uh, my first show in the in LA. So, uh, you know, I went to school in New York, but I never I had never been in Los Angeles. So it's kind of uh, kind of very new and strange for me, you know, to come to another part of the United States and kind of experience different people anyway. So uh, I'm not sure if you have seen my show at uh, Commonwealth and Council and uh, Peg Art. So I'm not going to talk a lot about that show because, uh, you know, you, maybe you already saw the show or, you know, you, you could see, you know, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, during, my, during the exhibition period. So. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about, uh, I think the most of people here uh, don't know about my work very well. So I'm trying to introduce, you know, uh, what kind of artistic practice I've been done uh, and what is the background. Of, and I want to talk about a little bit about Korean artwork because uh, uh, I think that my perspective is quite different with other artists or, or other Korean art historian. So, uh, well, yeah, so uh, that's what I want to say. But, uh, but to be frank, I'm a little nervous <laughs> because, uh, you know, English is not my, you know, you know, like first language. So, you know, it's kind of first time to make a presentation in English. So I'm trying to do best. So that's why I put a lot of text in my, uh, uh, what is that, in uh, PP5 so that you can get, uh, I guess, proper information, you know, not only from what I'm saying, but also you can read some text, you know, from the slide. So I hope it will help you to understand more about my, my presentation. So, hmm? okay, why it didn't work out? Uh, so as I said before, uh, today I want to introduce, you know, uh, what I have done, what kind of work I have been produced, you know, last 20 years. So, uh, so it's kind of, I don't know, uh, if you know, you know, history, of, I mean, I, I guess you don't know about my personal history, right? So, uh, well, uh, like, uh, you know, the I'm um, gay Korean man uh, who was born in Korea, you know, brought in Korea. But, but when I was young, when I was a student, you know, Korea is not that open. Uh, so I couldn't find a place to live there. So that's why uh, I looked for another place to live. Uh, to live. So that's why I kind of choose the New York uh, to, you know, to come and to find, the, I guess, uh, my own place to live as a gay person. Know? Uh, but at that time, there was no information about what gay community uh, like in the state. So I'm just kind of, I'm just want to leave. That's it, you know, without knowing, knowing any, any information about um, uh, uh, gay community in the, in the state and also in Europe. So first I went to London uh, to spend uh, some time. Uh, but I realized that it was tough to settle down in London. That's why I changed my mind and move again back to New York. And so actually I went to the school because going to, I, I went to Hunter College, but my first interest is not to study fine art because uh, my, my education in Korea is quite different uh, American education system. So somehow, I don't know, I'm kind of like, you know, uh, uh, I learned, but I didn't really sure about if I really want to be artist. So, so when I came to New York, I have a, I didn't have any plan to become an artist. I just want a place to live, and I'm trying to settle down in New York. But uh, after I spent for a while, suddenly I find that 
uh, kind of I I started to learn the contemporary art for the first time. Uh, so it's very difficult to explain you know, what's the difference between art education in Korea and uh, art education in the United States. Uh, so I don't want to talk right now that much, so, but later I try to explain, explain something related with my art practice. So yeah, that's kind of brief history of myself. So that's why uh, kind of living in uh, I spent five years in New York, so it's not that long period, but somehow it was kind of pivotal, you know, to for me personally and in terms of my art practice. So, what is that? Uh, so, like a, for me, becoming artist means establishing a certain uh, standpoint about art and. Uh, art or culture. So far, my artistic activities, including creating, uh, creating art, that is closely connected to the perspective of the, the other. So that which formed around my gay identity, as well as uh, as well as finding a mode of art practice that corresponds with it. So uh, there's uh, some, I guess, key word related with my artistic practice. So. Uh, I don't have to explain everything, but uh, the most important thing is uh, the last one. Uh, you know, so my thought has been changing a lot, you know, so, so I cannot say give one uh, answer to you guys. What is uh, well, my idea about, you know, art or whatever, but uh, the most important thing is uh, uh, creating diversity in Korean society and Korean art. So anyway, I, I live in Korea now and and since I moved back to Korea, uh, you know, I've been working on the project, you know, last almost 15 years. So, so all my practice based on, you know, Korean culture and Korean artwork. So I cannot deny that I'm, I'm a Korean artist, right? So most of my work based on, strongly based on my experience in Korea. Uh, and today, uh, if I say something about my uh, my role as an artist is uh, more like a, uh, in Korean context, not American context, right? So uh, my identity as a gay man was a key in the early age, early stage of my artistic career. Uh, it, very same to other, I guess, uh, gay Asian artists, uh, not only in Asia but also in uh, in the state. So. Uh, when I went to New York, suddenly I met so many gay uh, Asian, not only Korean people, but also Filipino, Japanese, you know. Uh, suddenly there, I found that there's uh, so many gay Asian men who moved from their home com country in Asia. So uh, we share a lot in common. It's more like, a, uh, what can I say, uh, kind of same goal or kind of uh, share with, I share a lot of, you know, thing with other gay Asian artists. So, like other gay, uh, gay artists, you know, for me, you know, like uh, uh, dealing with my own sexuality is very important because, you know, it's almost impossible to, to do that in Korea. So, suddenly I got a chance to, you know, explore myself. So, so somehow I want to enjoy my freedom to express myself. So, that's why I started talking about myself, I mean, my sexuality, my identity, you know. So uh, this is the piece while I was in the graduate program. So it, I think this is very pivotal work because uh, after this work, my work become changed a lot, you know. So I guess before this work, uh, I still have a lot of, you know, what can I say, relationship. My work still kind of correspond to my previous education in Korea, but after that, somehow I could separate uh, my artistic practice from the, my previous you know, art education. So I can say like a conceptual uh, art is a very new for me. You know, I never learned about conceptual art in, in Korea. So, uh, so uh, when I was in uh, Hunter, you know, I started learning about 
uh, conceptual art. I'm very, very enjoy, you know, like learning about conceptual art and practice with, you know, that history. So, uh, so here what I do is, uh, you know, I place the personal ad. I, I don't know, you guys know about that, you know. So, uh, nowadays people meet through the internet, I guess, or the cell phone. But uh, this is the 90s culture in New York. So every, not every people, but many people place the, their personal ad in the, actually that's Village Voice. It's a weekly newspaper, I think. So uh, what I was interested in, people use the quote, like uh, I use code GKN, means gay Korean man, seeking the real Robert Gober or something like that. So if you lived in New York, you, you knew how to read you know, this kind of quote. So, uh, so anyway, so I, I learned about that quote and uh, I wanna uh, use this small uh, personal ad to present myself. So it's the first time, uh, well, I, I talk, talk to my friend, I mean, personal level, but I never speak out in public level. So I think this is kind of first the public, I guess the public uh, announcement of, you know, being a gay, something like that. Uh, so, uh, and also at the time, you know, I started to came up to uh, Korean people. You know, it's not a difficult to came up to American people because, uh, you know, that's that's not a big deal. But uh, although I lived in New York, somehow it's very hard to came out to my old Korean friend. And also, like uh, Los Angeles, in New York, there's a huge Korean community. So uh, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> you know, uh, hang out with other Korean people. So for a while, I'm separate uh, myself from, you know, Korean people in Korean community. Uh, but finally, I feel very comfortable to talk about myself to other Korean people. So, okay, so why not? And then uh, this is the time when I started coming out to other Korean people. So I knew that this is kind of a very important uh, lifetime in my life, so why I can I couldn't make uh, an art piece related with my very important moment of life. That's why you know uh, I create this piece. So yeah, you know the who is a robot gobble, right? So uh, so I placed the five personal ad for different artists. Uh, but thing is, I put the word the real. Uh, so I'm kind of. I'm trying to contact uh, Robert Gober, but on the other hand, I'm kind of questioning who is Robert Gober, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, I I like to meet him, but uh, it's not just him. I want to meet, you know, many different kind of, you know, Robert Gober. So anyway, I met Robert Gober through this ad, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> well, the real yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, like, a, uh, for me, this piece is kind of way to find out myself, not just express myself. It's kind of way to finding myself. And, and also, I, that's why I'm, you know, type to detaching and attaching, right? So I believe that in order to find out yourself, you have to detach. You know, I, I think this is, it is necessary to detach yourself from uh, your home country or your you know, fam family, maybe your first language, you know. So, and then you sh we should try, reattach, I guess, you know, your family, whatever, you know. So I, for me, coming to New York is a uh, way of detaching myself from my home culture and home country and uh, from my, you know, parents. So, uh, so, from that experience, I learned that you know, detaching process is very important to find out you know, uh, myself and you know, personal identity. You know. uh, so after that, I have to think about uh, how to reattach myself to my uh, hometown, home country, and also you know, uh, how to attach the American culture because it, it was very new to me. So uh, it's not easy to. Uh, make myself, you know, teach the American culture. So that's, that's the thing. Uh, so 
uh, beside my personal life, uh, I want to think about what kind of separation I needed for finding my own art practice. You know, so that's why I, uh, I kind of choose conceptual art because conceptual art is for me uh, uh, kind of artist way. My 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 artist way of you know detaching my practice from my previous education or from Korean art world. Uh, as long as I know uh, Korean art history, there is no trace of conceptual art. So nowadays uh, there is uh, some discussion about uh, conceptual art in Korea. Many historians said that uh, there is a uh, conceptual art in Korea, but uh, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not, you know, agree with those kind of idea. So. Uh, so, experience as an alien to whom sell down is not easy, who is always ready to leave, is reflected in the realization, exhibition, and uh, preser preservation of the artwork. So, uh, I very simple. I just want to make my work. Uh, uh, similar to my life, you know. So because at the time, I'm not citizen. I'm not. Uh, I'm just foreigner. I'm foreign student, I guess. So, uh, and I didn't know where I should go after my graduation. Although I tried to settle down in the state, right. So, but somehow I become like my life. You know, why I have to settle down in certain uh, location or country, and 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 that's why uh, I'm kind of decide. You know, uh, kind of accept myself as an alien. You know, and enjoy my life. And and also, this is I guess uh, uh, one example uh, how I made my piece similar to my life. So uh, let me just show the, some image of the piece. So this is the incense powder. So I guess you guys know the what is the incense, right? So usually incense come out in form of a stick, right? Uh, but I grind it to write. So I grind the incense, incense to make a powder. And then I write down the uh, names of Geiba where I have a show. So this is all Geiba's name in Korea. Uh, so I did this piece after I moved back to Korea. Uh, so uh, many people at the times in Korea thought that there was a not no gay bar, but uh, there are not many gay bar or not many gay people around in Korea. But uh, but when I moved back to Korea, suddenly I found that you know there's a huge number of gay bar club and gay people. I mean we got huge number of I mean uh, gay population. You know, so uh, so when I create this piece, I wrote down more than 150 something. You know, so so it's a lot. Uh, so. Uh, at the beginning, I wrote down the Geiba's name with the incense powder, and at the opening, I set a fire. So uh, it started burning. So you can see the smoke coming out of the piece. So you know it burns slowly throughout the exhibition period. So you can see the uh, some part become ash, and other part, other parts still waiting to get fire. So this is the, the end of the exhibition. So everything is uh, burned out and uh, just sweep away. So, so in order to show this piece, I think it's quite simple. You know, I don't need any others, but I just uh, bring the you know, a pack of powder to the place where uh, I have a show, and then write down for a while, and then I didn't ask you know gallery or museum to send send it back to me because uh, you know, it doesn't have to be they just throw throw away that's it right so uh, somehow I feel that this piece is very easy to uh, travel around right so uh, I've been shown this piece in many cities you know in Europe in United States in South America so like every time I travel to some city, uh, I just meet the gay people and then try to find the names of gay bar and then write down, kind of same, repeat the same process. But language is always changing. And yeah, 
And, but what was very interesting for me about this work is uh, people's reaction is quite different. You know, this is kind of same text, but people read the text from their personal perspective, right? So that, that's very interesting for me. So I think the translation of this work is very important, right? So when I show this work in Korea, can you guess how Korean people react to this, this piece? They like it a lot, because uh, it's kind of you know, uh, beautiful, and people enjoy the smell, you know? So uh, most of the Asian country has a good, I guess, uh, history about burning incense in good region, right? So Korea, we, we are the same, right? So that's why I guess people thought that my work, my incense piece about Korean tradition or something like that. But later they figured out that this is not about you know, beauty of our tradition, you know, it's about gay community in Korea. So uh, one day a father came to the exhibition space to see my work with his daughter. And his daughter asked him why this piece had to be burned out, you know. So, and then father said that because the old text is very dirty and bad, that's why it has to be burned out. So that's his own explanation, translation. So uh, when I heard about that story, I'm kind of shocked. You know, I never thought about uh, you know, my work is intent to be interpreted that way, right? But somehow uh, I've become accepted, you know, that that's his own interpretation, translation, and uh, that interpretation uh, didn't re reflect me. It showed his thought or his perspective, you know? So yeah, that, that's exactly what I want to talk, you know? So like, uh, I don't want to express something, uh, I'm not the artist who want to express something, you know. Uh, I want to make a question. You know? I want to make the audience to translate from their own you know, perspective. So, uh, so uh, before I talk about separation, or not separation, you know, attaching and uh, detaching, more reattaching, you know? So uh, that's why I have to think about uh, how I can depreciate my art practice from uh, Korean mainstream artwork. You know? Otherwise, uh, uh, how can I tell, you know, my work is different with the, you know, other Korean people, you know? I always say that uh, I'm a gay person who, who has a different uh, lifestyle or cultural experience, blah, blah, blah. So uh, in order to, I don't have to be justify that, but somehow I want to prove, you know, as an artist, my life uh, is different with, you know, other people. And also my work should be different with other artists. So that's why, although I lived in New York for a while, I somehow I had to think about uh, Korean art history and Korean art work, you know. So anyway, I define the Korean mainstream art as a heterosexual male Korean. So I mean, that's not a good or bad word. I'm just saying that, right? Uh, have you ever heard about, I don't know, uh, if you're familiar with the Korean art history. So we have a two major art movement in Korea. One is uh, like a uh, Minjung art. You know, that's a uh, political uh, art. We say that that's a very political you know, art movement. And the other one is uh, 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 like a, what, how to translate, monochrome. Uh, we say the monochrome, you know, abstract expressionism in Korean version, I think. Uh, so actually, Minjung Misur are very against monochrome painting because monochrome is a uh, uh, you know, the like uh, American expressionism, it's art for art, you know. Uh, so that's why Minjung is against the art for art, you know. They want to, uh, they want to involve in, you know, people's life, you know. So that's why uh, they kind of, you know, kind of compete each other for a while. But at the end, uh, they, 
these two become a very major art movement in Korea. So without talking, without mention, Minjung Misul and Monochrome, we cannot explain Korean art world, right? But my question is, uh, uh, where I should go? You know, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to choose Minjung Misul or, you know, uh, uh, Korean uh, abstract ex expressionism. You know, both. Uh, art movement doesn't didn't fit to me because for me these two movements are the same. They are very uh, male heterosexual centered artist. You know? So that's why I somehow I want to find a different way to uh, yeah. Uh, but I know that there's a some some kind of you know. Artist, which is very different with the monochrome painting and Minjung Misul, but uh, somehow they have been not so active. So, so I'm still thinking, why? Why is that? Why is that? Uh, so, yeah. So somehow we need to rediscover that kind of history. So I don't want to say there's only two art movements in Korea. You know, we should be. There should be. You know, uh, more artists move on to a uh, different kind of artist beside you know monochrome and you know uh, Minjung Misur you know but nowadays in Korea if you come to Korea uh, you know most of the artists came from these two so so hard to find the artists from uh, other side uh, so that's why somehow I want to be a uh, different from you know uh, monochrome or you know Minjung Misur so this is what I said. So I I think uh, Korean subjective art is uh, result oriented, content oriented, expression oriented, gen uh, gender or uh, media oriented. Uh, although you know Minjung Misul is quite different with uh, abstract painting in terms of you know uh, contents. But uh, I think that I find that you know this kind of commonness between these two. That's why you know I describe you know the male, oh, not male, subject art in Korea is a blah blah like that. So th that's why somehow I choose my work uh, become a process oriented, participatory, conceptual, and genre uh, deconstructive. You no, know? uh, not I. I it, this but. Uh, I never, but uh, I want to say it takes us such a long time to figure out, you know, uh, this this kind of result. So uh, I just want to show uh, the example of my result. So uh, this is the. Uh, project which I did for Busan Biennale in 2006. So t t the title is Name Project Looking for You in Busan. Uh, and after that, I did again uh, in Seoul. That's why you know, there was a two different uh, names. So, but anyway, the first version of uh, Looking for You, in first version of Name Project, uh, was taken in Busan. So this is the uh, my, what can I say, my space in Busan Biennale. Uh, but I didn't display the, any object. I just described the, what, uh, what is my project about. Uh, so uh, this is Korean, so you cannot read it. But what is this is that in order to, uh, what I did for the project, I made a small research about uh, what is the common name in Korea? So you guys know many Korean people have the same family name, Kim or E. So we say that 50, 50, more than 50% of Korean people has a Kim or Lee, right? So, uh, so I'm, I'm very curious, you know, okay, I know that what is the most common family name in Korea, but I want to know that what is the most, not only family name, but also what is the most common first name in Korea. So that's why I made a small research. And this is a result. This is the top 20 most common name in Korea. So at the time, I teach the school. So suddenly, I found that 
many students have this name, right? So like a Kim Kyung Woo, Kim Min Su, Kim Min Ji. So you know. So according to my research, each name has a ten thousand. Uh, so I can't remember the exact number, but it's a huge number. Uh, there is a huge number of each number. So I thought that's why I thought that there's a high possibility to find that these people doing the uh, Busan Biennale. So, uh, and I want to introduce how I find these people. Okay, so, so I made an announcement to find that this. <laughs> Okay, so I call each name once a day. So can you guess what's the possibility to find these people? So anyway, I call each name once a day throughout the exhibition period. And this is the, okay. Then, yeah, this is the result. So, if audience came to meeting point to participate in my project, I ask them to give a signature. So you see 10 people give a signature on their name. So that means I find 10, 10 people out of 20. Uh, that's why I plan to find another 10 people in another location. So in Seoul, when I had a solo show at Art Sonje, I wanted to find that the last of 10 people. So in this case, I use a truck carrying the signboard, you know, so that's Korean, but you can see the English name also, right? So uh, I don't know exactly how long, but maybe once a week, I change the name, you know, trying to find the 10 people. So I parked the car during the uh, museum hours, but after museum closed, I started moving around the city to find the people. So, so sometimes I park the car uh, so that people can, could approach and, you know, so many people came and they said, I'm Lee jong -hun, you know, <laughs> so why you are looking for me? And so I, I got a chance to explain about my project and I really want people to invite contemporary museum. I mean, uh, I felt that for Korean people, many for uh, Korean people, contemporary art uh, are not familiar with, you know. So for them, the contemporary art is something uh, difficult. So uh, I, because I think that they just didn't have a chance, you know. So if they got a chance, you know, they feel more comfortable, they can enjoy in you know, contemporary art. So, uh, uh, so this is kind of way, I mean, uh, I said, you know, I'm looking for you know, 10 people, but uh, there's many different reasons. One of the main reasons is to f invite people to the museum space. So this is kind of map uh, where I had been during the, my project. So it's, it it's looks like a map of Seoul, actually. You know, I you know, visited almost every corner of Seoul. So, so uh, this time, the <laughs> it was a little more difficult to find the people. Because, uh, you know, although many people were interested in uh, 
participate in my project, you know, uh, that means they had to come to the museum, right? So Korean people are so busy. You know, we work very hard, you know, <laughs> until so late. So although they wanted to come to museum, you know, I guess many people didn't have time, right? So, but uh, I got one person. Uh, <laughs> almost the end of the exhibition. So his name is Kim Min Soo. So, so I find one more person, right? Yeah. So like, uh, you know that, uh, like as I said, each name has a thousand, more than thousands population. So for me, each name doesn't look like a personal name. It's kind of name of group, right? There is a, a group of Kim Min Soo, right? Uh, so that reflects Korean society. I mean, because Korean in Korean society, collective identity is very important. You know, uh, so it's somehow I feel that uh, finding personal identity against collectiveness is very difficult. You know, so that's why uh, I'm one of. I'm trying to find a person out of a group of, you know, Kim Min Soo. So, like, there's a you know huge number of Kim Min Soo. Uh, that's why I need to find one person out of you know huge number of people, so that that person become a you know, person for me at least, right? Yeah, so, I think this work uh, uh, is not just about finding people, but also uh, finding eligibility in Korean society which is very collective and, yeah, very collective culture. Uh, so after that, no, uh, before that, uh, I did another project. This is kind of my second project in Korea. So the title is My Beautiful London Man Sarubia. So you know this title, where it came from, right? There is a famous British movie titled My Beautiful London Man. You know, so I don't have to explain, you know. So uh, it, it was a kind of you know, alternative space in Korea. So 90s in Korea, there's many uh, new spaces. We call it alternative space. You know, it was the first time in Korea, uh, was first time in Korea uh, to open the non-profit organization in Korea. So, I'm kind of lucky because uh, when I moved back to Korea, you know, they were very active. They just started and very active. That's why I'm kind of, uh, it's kind of easy for me to get a chance to, you know, show my work. Otherwise, uh, I might, I could have very hard time, you know, to uh, exhibit my work. But as I said, people, at the time, there was a, uh, a lot of, you know, Alternative, st alternative spaces open, so kind of easy to approach them. So this is a, one of the alternative space in Korea. So I got a chance to have a solo show, so I did this project. Uh, uh, well, I don't know how people uh, know about me, but uh, at some point I become known gay artist. So when I was in Gwangju, uh, there was a staff at Gwangju, Gwangju Biennale. So she came to, because she brought a uh, senator around the Biennale. And then she approached my space and then introduced me to the senator, said, oh, he's a gay artist. So like, uh, what is this? <laughs> like, uh, uh, he, he doesn't say, she, she doesn't say, you know, I'm in Hwan oh, blah, blah, blah. She just say, oh, he's a gay artist. So, uh, well, that that's not wrong, <laughs> but somehow it's kind of weird I mean, to be introduced. You know, I'm gay artist, right? So, uh, well, so uh, after that, I, I noticed that many many you know Korean people call me gay artist. So, uh, and they said they are not that conservative. I mean, art people in Korea are not that you know conservative. So. Uh, I wasn't uh, kind of, I didn't have a, such a hard time, you know, you know, to deal with this. So I'm kind of feel comfortable uh, to hang out with other, you know, people in Korea. But uh, in some point, I realized that uh, something which I don't really understand. You know? So that's why I started this project. So I made a you know, laundromat 
and then invite the people uh, to have a laundry with me. So they cannot bring uh, laundry. They had to give the clothes where they are wearing. So if you want uh, every clothes you wearing, then you have to be naked. That's the rule, right? So uh, this is kind of result. So it took like uh, five hours uh, to get everything done. So one participant and I walk into the laundry and then we lock the door, spend uh, five hours to get laundries done. So uh, what happened inside, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, people, people have came actually very different reason so I cannot tell you know whole story but uh, somehow you know they really uh, want to know about me and they want to participate in my project so that's why many people uh, were willing to give almost every item where they are wearing right so I don't have to explain you if you see the photo you can imagine you know, how they were like inside the you know uh, by laundromat. So yeah, so I I don't wanna I somehow you know I wanna uh, like uh, uh, talk about myself or maybe Korean society uh, or you know sexuality identity whatever you know uh, in person. You know, I don't like you know talk. You know, and hear through other people, so uh, and so that I can explain or I can argue in whatever you know. So that's why I started this project. But uh, not many people actually came. <laughs> so at the beginning of, as I did this project for three months. So first of one month, nobody showed. Up. <laughs> so I kind of disappointed, and and then uh, one newspaper. Korean newspaper covered the story about my project and then many people came, right? So I invited all Korean artists and creators, but they didn't come up. <laughs> At the newspaper, uh, talk about my project, just regular people came. They came to my project, you know, they just want to learn about myself. And yeah, so uh, this is kind of uh, actually good experience, you know. I thought that our people is very open-minded, but there's uh, some people who were more open-minded than artists, so that's what I find it. So I guess I don't have enough time, so I'm just skip this uh, project. Yeah. So before I said that uh, Korean art world is a very male center, male heterosexual, uh, male centered society. So I want to introduce one example uh, how it is like. So there was a uh, book published by uh, Arco Museum. You know, th that's kind of organization from government. So they choose 100 uh, artists in Korea. So uh, and then I counted how many female artists in the book out of you know 100. So. Uh, 29 artists are female. That means, uh, what is that? Uh, 71 artists, of, you know, male artists. But if you go to Korean art school, more than 80% students are female. So considering that number, I mean, the female student in art school in Korea, this is, doesn't make sense at all. So, so, but for me, it's very clear and very simple, but very clear uh, evidence, you know, why I call the Korean art where it's very male-centered, right? Uh, can you guess how many gay artists are in there? You know, or you know, how many, uh, what can I say, Joseonjo? I mean, what is Joseonjo? Like uh, uh, Chinese, Korean, or, 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 or maybe uh, Korean-American people in that. So, as long as I know, there is no uh, every artist in that book was born in Korea. You know, so so somehow very easy for me to find that why uh, why uh, why not why I mean uh, uh, Korean art was very 
the male-centered society, male-centered world. So somehow uh, I had to uh, challenge uh, that situation, right? So uh, this is what I said. Uh, in Korean society where the idea of homogeneous race and culture still hold, holds true, and a collective value system that operates with the nation, family, and state as a medium is uh, universalized. That's why, for me, the important role of the queer art in Korea context is to contribute to the creation of the realm of difference and cultural diversity. Blah, 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 blah right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there was a very famous sentence, 우리는 하나다, in Korean. So that means uh, we are one. Right? Uh, so it's a good expression, actually. You know? So we are one, uh, we can be one community or you know, something like that. Uh, but my question is uh, why gay people cannot be one? You know? So uh, this is a word you know, I always heard about it you know, while I was a student. But suddenly, when I uh, open my, you know, identity. You know, people say that you are not my, you are not one, something like that, right? So, I mean, like, uh, uh, that's why I want to know the, who is we or who, what is one mean, right? So uh, that's why I said that we are not one. That's what I want to say. I mean, we can be different one or we can be several or something. We doesn't have to be one, right? So I believe that there's many different kind of Korean people, right? Korean American is a different kind of Korean people. Uh, cannot be the same Korean people who lives in Korean Peninsula. Uh, I experienced that, you know, Chinese Korean is quite different with the Japanese Korean, you know? And there's uh, some Korean people uh, who is not, doesn't have a Korean blood, right? Something like that. So uh, that's why I, why I said we are not one. You know, we are different. We are several. We are diverse. Uh, uh, so last year I had a solo show. Uh, the title was I'm Not One. Uh, so the title came from actually you know deal with the the expression we are the one. So what I want to say is uh, uh, we are different. Uh, Korean people can be different, or American people can be different Korean people also. But I'm, I'm, I believe that I'm not the one, you know. I'm, I experience that I've become very different based on where I live, you know, where I belong to, you know. I was, uh, when I was in New York, you know, I behaved different way, you know. Somehow I'm kind of, I'm, willing to Americanize myself, you know, so, but I wasn't American. That's why, you know, uh, my identity is something in between, I guess. But when I move back to Korea, I become, uh, I kind of lose, you know, my lifestyle when I had it in New York, you know, so, so I feel that, oh, I'm uh, changing, something like that. Yeah, so my identity is not fixed. That's what I believe. My identity is always changed, depend on where I live or where I belong to, you know. So the context is for me quite important, you know. So, uh, so like uh, in Korean community or Korean society, we always talk about who is we and who is not we or something like that. So that, I guess that's okay. I think not only Korean people, but also American people uh, talk about that. That kind of division always exists in any society, right? Uh, so that's why I feel that this is not just about Korean society, but also any society or any uh, country have this kind of uh, issues, right? Uh, but I just want to, what I really want to deal with is, uh, defin is not definition of who, who is we. I want to deal with the issue of social exclusiveness, you know? Why some society is more flexible to accept different things, but why some country or some culture are very stubborn to accept you know, different people or different identity. I mean, that's my interest. So in 2014, I 
defined my art, uh, my art practice, practice as well looking out for cultural blind spot. Uh, so uh, that's the title of my exhibition and also that's the title, a kind of uh, title by art pro uh, practice. You know? So since then, I have created many different kinds of work under the same name. I'm looking for blind spot. So uh, here in LA, I'm showing uh, some work uh, at Peg Art and Commonance Council. So they have a different name, but actually they created the under this name, Looking Out for Blind Spot. So Looking Out Blind, blind Spot consists of many different individual artwork. Yeah. So uh, this is my essay, uh, which explain uh, why I called my artist practice as uh, Looking Out for Blind Spot, right? So uh, for me, uh, blind spot is a very important uh, area. So you know, something if you know somehow, including me, we have to be in mainstream culture. You know, we cannot be totally free from ma mainstream culture. You know, but we know that you know, uh, in order to live in uh, mainstream culture, we have to follow something. You know, very kind of rule, strict rule there. So, but if you are not accept by the mainstream culture or whatever, people start, I think that people started looking for blind spot. Uh, what, what I'm saying is that there's a cultural blind spot where people explore their freedom, you know, uh, that wasn't accepted by mainstream culture. So, so my art pra practice is like that. That's why I so, uh, th and then I, I just want to introduce my recent pro project. So, uh, after my exhibition in 2009 at Art Center, uh, I'm kind of have a long vacation. <laughs> you know, I was sick and actually uh, not many people invite me to the show. So, it was my choice, but it wasn't my choice. You know. Uh, but although I didn't show my work at the exhibition space, I keep working on the, some project, right? So and after I become a professor at SNU, suddenly many people invite me again uh, to <laughs> exhibition. So, uh, but you know, anyway, I appreciate those people, you know. So that's the time I restarting showing my project uh, into Korean art world, I, I think. So Guardian Eye is uh, really related with my blind spot because uh, it's about surveillance system, you know. So you know the uh, surveillance system really related with the blind spot, right? So uh, there is a museum uh, called Lium. It's a Samsung Corporation's museum, right? So they have a kind of separate uh, exhibition space. This is one of them uh, called the Plateau. So whenever I go there, I find that God, you can see the God. They are not museum people, you know, they are professional God. So, well, they're looking good, you know, but <laughs> somehow why they're there, you know, they, they want to protect me or they want to uh, looking for something. So I don't understand. I'm very uh, interested in that person, right? So whenever I go there, I always look, look not him, but you know, they always change the guys, but you know, very interesting in looking them, you know? But they always looking me, right? <laughs> so we exchange the contact. Uh, so uh, when, I got a, when I was invited to Leo Museum, uh, I made a proposal to do this project. So, this is project with the uh, one of God. So I invite him to participate in, in my project. But I didn't tell him what he should do, you know, what he would do. So in order to do that something together, I feel that we have to be know each other, right? So that's why I suggest him to meet 10 times uh, to become friend or whatever, collaborate, yeah. Uh, but I, uh, he's, 
he has a freedom. If he don't want it, he can give up any time. So anyway, so this is kind of record of our meeting. So this is first, first meeting. So you can I'm just show quickly. This is second meeting. So after meeting, I always ask him if we want to meet again, right? So he said that, yes, I could. And then I got third meeting, but he said that, sorry, I couldn't participate in your project anymore. So have a good day. So that's it. Uh, so at the in the exhibition space, I want, although I wanted to do something, I want to do performance with him, but because he gave up, I couldn't do that. So I just showed a record of our meeting, and then I do performance by myself. So what I did is, uh, this is what I did. So I practiced dancing. So I supposed to dance with him, but because he gave up, I just danced by myself in the museum space for a day, and then captured by surveillance camera. So during the exhibition period, I show the video of dancing <laughs> by myself. So you can see the still image of the video, uh, which is like dancing by myself in the museum space. So, so I want to use the surveillance camera as uh, my artistic tool. I mean, yeah. So then after that, uh, I started looking out for blind spots. So it was in 2014. So there was a list of the individual uh, list of individual projects. So reciprocal viewing system is now exhibited in Common Sense and Council and Begart. And my blind spot showing at Begart. And my blind spot, the interview, and on my way to blind spot is showing at Common Sense and Council. So if you're interested, you just go there, please. Take a time, look at it, right? Uh, but it has been changing. I mean, when I started reciprocal, reciprocal viewing system in 2014, the venue was uh, two places. Uh, uh, one is a space building and building. The other one is a gallery factory. So, uh, okay. So, you know the galleries in. Not every, I mean, Common Sense Council uh, didn't have a surveillance camera for my project. So, but most of uh, exhibition space have a surveillance camera. So I use a surveillance camera uh, for this project. So what I did here, I find the blind spot of surveillance camera and then visualize the blind spot with something. So in this case at factory, I use a styrofoam. So I feel the every blind spot with the styrofoam. So if you walk in, you have to be catched by a surveillance camera because I block every blind spot. Uh, and you see this strange shape of blind, blind spot. So it's kind of sculpture. It looks kind of sculpture or installation. Yeah. But it's quite different with what I did here in LA because uh, this is the three-dimensional stuff. So. Uh, if you go to uh, Common Sense Council or Begart, you see the result of uh, blind spot, which I did in here. Is that that's not like that. And this is another case. So uh, I want to use a different way to visualize the blind spot, depend on space. So this is the willing and dealing in Seoul. So here I use a paint. To, it's more simple, you know. So like a, uh, using styrofoam is a very hard, very hard. So okay. So I need different way to visualize blind spot. So that's why I choose paint. Uh, just paint the blind spot. So y you see, you know, where's the blind spot in willing and dealing. So if you don't know about but if you don't know exactly what my project about it, people look at it as a kind of kind of abstract painting or something. You know, so many people say, "Oh, this is beautiful," <laughs> and then they stay three seconds and then you know walk away. <laughs> so, so that's why uh, in uh, 2015, when I was invited to Korean Artist Prize, I wanted 
try a different way. So because when I painted a bright spot with a yellow paint, you know, it doesn't look like it didn't really show, you know, uh, my intention. That's why I need to change the way to visualize the blind spot. So it was time to use a tape, you know, pink tape, right? So if you see the monitor, this you can see the uh, image from surveillance camera instead of the in each spaces. But if you look at the monitor, there's nothing you can see, you know. So, but if you walk in the uh, exhibition space, you can see something, right? As you, you didn't see through the monitor. So this is the kind of result of searching for blind spot at MMCA. So it's kind of huge space where blind spot. So this is uh, another space. I, I use uh, two different spaces. So same here. So I just quick, quickly show the image of, some image of the exhibition here in LA. So this is the monitor showing the back art and common sense. So it's the same, if you look at the monitor, you know, it looks empty space. But if you go there, uh, you see the research of my installation. So this is the back art. Uh, this is common and council. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to, you know, tell more about uh, the my exhibition in LA. As I said, you can go there. It should be better to go, mm -hmm. go visit there, and then just feel from your perspective, right? Think about. It. So, but uh, instead, I introduce, I guess, a two project which I. Uh, couldn't realize they're here in LA. So one is my blind spot then docent. So this kind of, uh, it, I think this is kind of performance. So I invited the blind people as a docent. So you know the, what is a docent, right? So in Korean museum, every Korean museum have a docent program, you know? So, but. This time, I invite blind people to become a docent for my project. So they stay in my space. And if anybody asks her to explain my role, she, she would. She would. So, but in many times, people didn't realize that she is a blind per person. Uh, so yeah, but you know, uh, but if somebody knows she's a blind person, then uh, I guess people kind of uh, sorry. I mean, because uh, uh, kind of asking blind people to do something is kind of uh, not easy for Korean people. Very, they're very hesitant to do that. Uh, so for a long period, she has to, she had to sit because nobody really asked her you know, to do her performance, right? But at some point, the people approached her to ask, you know, her her job. So that's why you can see in this image, you know, what she's doing here. You know, she just she she was great person to explain my project. So the reason why I invite blind people to my project is I think uh, I want to think about blind spot in different uh, context. So. These people experience something I never experienced. They are blind people, actually. You know, so they, I feel that they really know about what is a blind, blind spot, especially in the museum context. So when I had an interview with them, they said that, oh, they really like the art. Uh, they try to come to museum, but so hard to enjoy exhibition and museum, you know? Uh, so they were, that's why they were very happy to join my project and something like that. So uh, although their, their main job is to explain my project, I ask them, you know, you can uh, explain whatever you want. You know, it's your performance. So you can uh, tell story from your perspective. Uh, it should be okay as long as it, 
uh, your story related with the blind culture, or blind, you know, blind spot or whatever. You no, know? so uh, that's why each person uh, create their own story. Not 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 that long, but very simple. But somehow very, what can I say? Very, uh, I cannot explain like her. But they they are create their own way to explain what is a blind spot from their perspective. So because there were two spaces, you know, one of their job is to bring the audience uh, from one space to the other space. So you know, if other people look at them, they thought that they were guided. You know, but actually, they were guiding other people. You know, that was a very important process. This is another person. I can't remember his name. So they practice a lot. So they knew, you know, how to navigate, you know, the museum. So very. Uh, so that's why they look very natural to walk around the museum. So I placed the microphone inside the the white stick, so that while they working around the sound. Uh, Broadcast to the speaker inside the museum. So if you stay in the inside the museum, suddenly you have to hear the you know huge sound from the microphone. So that's the kind of uh, very important way to present you know their performance, I think. And there's another project called "I'm Not an Artist and I'm an Artist," but. Uh, the still image is not uh, the video piece. The, the person is an actor. Uh, the reason why I invite him was, uh, you know, the uh, Korean Artist Prize is very similar to Turner Prize in UK. So they select four artists. So we have to show something, and then finally they select one winner. Something like that. So during the exhibition period, I guess the museum and the sponsor try to promote artists. That's why they want to make a video of each artist. So they have an interview and they broadcast the interview uh, in, inside the museum. So, but I didn't want it. So why have to be, you know, explain myself? You know, in front of the camera, so I always present my work, you know, enough. And and I'm so you know the the famous book, you know, Death of the Author, right? So I don't, I'm I'm very like that idea of the death of author, you know. So I many of my work is a partic participatory art because uh, the for me partic participatory art is really against the artist centered, you know, work. So. That's why somehow I try to you know get away from the artist-centered practice, but suddenly they invite me, uh, and then I don't know you know they they present myself you know, too much. So that's why I kind of reject their offer to make an interview video. But later I realized that uh, if I didn't do that, how can other people understand my intention? You no. Know? So that's why I hired the you know actor to act as a me. So, uh, so at the beginning of from the beginning of the exhibition, he appeared in the public event as a me. So this is the beginning of the exhibition. So he went to the ceremony and then received the whatever, and then <laughs> shake the the president of SBS company or something like that. And because the museum asked him to make a presentation, actually, I don't know, ask me or ask him. So museum know that I told the museum, you know, so he become me. So if want me to do, you should contact him, not to me, right? So anyway, so it, this is the opening. So he made a presentation. I think he did a great job. So every people <laughs> like me. <laughs> so, but. Yeah, so the finally, you know that uh, this is the ceremony for prize. So they didn't tell who is the winner until the, the ceremony is open. So the, he went there, right? 
so then he received the prize. <laughs> so. And then what I did, uh, I interviewed with uh, artists, not artists, people who gave up being an artist. Uh, because it, there is a four people for Korean Artist Prize, that's why I select four people who gave up being an artist. Uh, I want to, I want to know that why they have to had to give up, you know, being an artist. So I had an interview, and then I memorized what they said, and then I pretend them. Uh, uh, so this is the kind of video, uh, having an interview myself, <laughs> you know, uh, talking about uh, why I'm not artist anymore, you know. So. But very touching, you know what they said. I really understand. So, the reason they told me is not personal at all. It's more about art world, art system, you know. So, I'm sure there's a personal reason, but that's what. But I'm more focused on. There should be more reason behind the personal thing, you know. So that's really related with the Korean art world, the Korean art system. So anyway, uh, so I'm showing myself. Uh, within uh, exhibition space. So people didn't know me. People thought that actor is me, so they more pay attention to the actor rather than to me. So, so I, I think this is the last slide. So uh, very simple. Uh, having experience uh, as an artist you know, more than 10 years, 20 years, I feel that I mean, creating artwork, creating artwork is good, great, but I feel that's not enough, you know, to, uh, yeah, as an artist, you know, role. So in order to be, if you want, I mean, each artist have a different vision or standpoint, but if you want to be uh, very critical about culture, or if you want to looking for blind spot as an uh, artist practice, you know, creating artwork is not enough. So uh, I think that's why artists try different, many different, uh, many different practice. So in, for me, teaching is very important. I mean, like a, at some point I didn't have any show, but I really involved in teaching. So throughout my class, I can talk about uh, contemporary art, and also talk about my work. My and, and also I have to hear uh, how other people, other students, you know, think about contemporary art. So uh, it was very good way uh, to uh, create, you know, like an artistic, you know, uh, atmosphere, energy, and you know, uh, discourse, and and also. For me, uh, I, as an artist, I want to involve in Korean gay artists. Not, I mean, I'm not an activist, but I'm an artist. So I believe that artists can involve in you know, their own community uh, very good way, in you know, a very creative way. So for example, I started giving a lecture for gay people in Korea 10 years ago. Uh, so because of, I feel that there is not many audience for me. I mean, there's not many audience for contemporary art. So th that was, a, uh, but how can artists can survive without audience? So if you want to have a good audience, artists have to contribute to uh, make it, right? So because I'm educated, uh, that's why I started the lecture about, because people don't know, people didn't have a chance to know about contemporary art. That's why they were not interested. So. What I realized that uh, after, I guess, five or six years later, you know, people really understand, many of them, many of them really like contemporary art. And they become a, uh, what's the museum, they openly go to museum. Finally, they get together to make a kind of group. So they sponsor young artists. So now we have a small, not organization, but it's kind of small. So they kind of sponsor young artists and sometimes they collect the money, I kind of raise the money and I sponsor young artists and especially young artists who are interested in 
uh, I guess, more culturally oriented art practice, something like that. So, well, this is very simple example of my practice, but each artist can create different kind of, you know, uh, art practice. So when I'm talking about art practice, it doesn't, it, I mean, art creating is one of very important thing, but uh, for me, that's not all, you know, art practice should be teaching or should be creating or should be writing or should be involved in some, uh, some group, you know, to create something like that, to find a blind stuff, spot, whatever. Okay, so this is all uh, I can say today. So thank you very much. <laughs> so already 8.30, yeah. so. Do you have time to take a couple of questions? Yeah, I mean, are you okay with taking a few questions? But I'm okay, but uh, well, actually, I feel I speak too much, <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, well, rather give me, a, I mean, anybody want to say something, uh, rather than making question, or if you want to say something, well, it should be great to hear, you know. You mean in terms of names or in terms of race? <laughs> I think in terms of both. Like, both? I, I think it's like cultural too. But I uh -huh. just, But there should be a good book about you know why so many Korean people be, have the same name. Yeah. So, so I'm not, I'm not a good person to explain it. Yeah. Uh, only thing I can tell is that, so like a, why I'm doing research about the the names. The, what is the common names? in Korea, what I felt that why so many people got the same name, you know? So that was my question, you know, <laughs> right? Because every people say that, oh, I'm different. I mean, Korean people always say that I'm not the same with you, you know, I'm very different, right? Yeah. But suddenly I find that so many thousands, you know, 10,000, you know, people got the same name. So I think because the name is good, yeah. right? Yeah. The name is, has a very good meaning. That's why every people want to one it right uh, that's the thing I think so why we have to have good one always <laughs> right so why we have to compete to achieve the good thing right so if every people to achieve that really good one you become the thing the same we become the one so that's kind of I guess mentality I guess many Korean people want to have a good one yeah. right Okay, thank you. Yeah. So sometimes um, I I want to have a good one, but <laughs> but sometimes we have to think about you know uh, there there should be another choice, right? Uh, Besides having good 
good one or good thing, right? So otherwise, it, we become the same, I think. We become the one, you know. I have a question. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a little bit annoying, but it's interesting when you see the trajectory of your works, and you seem to, one through line seems to be that you're seeking something. So you're like looking for Robert Gobert and Cindy Sherman. You're looking for, well, and then, and then you have the incense installations in which you talk about people looking for one another in these uh, gay nightclubs mm. um, or bars. And then, uh, what was the next one? Then you're looking for people with very common Korean names. Uh, then you're looking for someone who's willing to engage with you in a laundromat <laughs> and the situation mm. that you've constructed. Um, and then there seems to be a significant shift in terms of um, a, a very different level of abstraction when you s start the project of looking for the cultural blind spots. Mm -hmm. What is a blind spot to you? Like what, what does that represent to you? Or maybe it's something that's also not fixed and that it continues to change maybe over time. Right, yeah, yeah. You're right. I mean, like a, a, there was a time gap between my early project and the project looking for blind spot. You know, so that's why you you kind of find that there is a difference between you know early previous work and the later work, right? Uh, so, well. Well, it's not easy to explain, you know, exactly why. But uh, I have uh, some experience. I mean, when I show my work for a while, uh, you know, I'm always curious how people react my work. You know, so every people know I'm dealing with a identity issue, more or sometimes in you know, myself. But for me, uh, talking about throughout my work. I'm not just talking about myself. You know, what I want to talk about is uh, uh, not just gay identity. It's, I want to talk about you know, structure. You know, who made a you know, uh, identity? What is the structure you know, to create an you know, uh, individual identity? You know? I want to see that. I just use my experience as a tool to talk about that kind of you know, structure. But what I realized that for many Korean audience, my work kind of, they couldn't, they, I guess they got a hard time to read that aspect. They thought that I'm just talking about my identity, you know, gayness or queer, you know, culture or something like that. Uh, and because I think they got difficult to connect uh, my work to their life. You know, there's kind of so. That's why I thought that I had to change it. You know, I wanna, I wanna, kind of persuade him. You know, I'm not just my work is not just about myself. I'm talking about our society, where you and I live together. So there should be something we can discuss together. You know, uh, so for a while I, I don't know. The, it's uh, in Korean art. There's a no clear comment on my work. I mean, there's a no, no. <laughs> There's no serious essay about my work, but I can hear some comment on my work. The, every people say that my work is very personal. That's the uh, comment on my work. Inwan's work is very personal, uh, which I don't agree. You know, my work is personal, but also very political, and so that's why I have to think about. Uh, I I have to find a different way to talk about you know cultural issue. Uh, so that's why I realized that, okay, you know, so I can talk about my issue through the different, you know, theme, which is a you know, blind spot, right? So blind spot, as you said, is not fixed one. You know, I feel that uh, mainstream Korean culture, as other society, very fixed. You know, we believe the one race, one family, one blood, something like that. So. We believe the pureness, you know. So if something mixed, that's not a good, good thing, right? Uh, so that's why I think that we need to find out 
kind of area, cultural area, where we can uh, interpret different way. We can try different thing. Uh, but my experience is like that. You know, when I enter gay community in Korea, you know, so although most of Korean people believe that there is no big gay community in Korea, but when I visit the you know, gay community in Korea for the first time, I was surprised, you know. So people find that space. It's, that's not a, that's a real space. And suddenly they find out kind of blind spot, I guess, blind spot of Korean mainstream culture. And they, are, they did very many things within the uh, gay community, which is a blind spot for me. So I'm just kind of use that example, expand my my interest to or to explain the you know Korean culture, yeah Korean culture, yeah, that, yeah makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you.